in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void. And God said, let us make man in our image, and let them have dominion. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not die. Then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall get God. Hello and welcome to the Gathering Church at Home. We're so honored you're with us today. However you're watching, welcome. We're glad you're with us. I'm so excited to share with you today the best news. After months of careful prayer, consideration, and counsel, we're going to be welcoming you back to in-person gatherings starting October 4th at the Reuter Family YMCA in Biltmore Park. It has been six months since we last worshiped together as one family, and I believe with all my heart that now is the time. We cannot wait any longer. The spiritual risk is too great. We are in an unprecedented season of emotional, mental, and spiritual decline. People are hurting and afraid, bitter and frustrated, and the church is the right place to meet those needs, and the church is where we can begin healing in community. It's time to praise together. It's time to be united side by side in agreement that God is good and worthy of our praise. It's time to worship together in one spirit. And it's time to have an environment again where people can enter into the process to know God, discovering Him for the very first time, to find freedom from the sin that so easily entangles and from the guilt and shame of our past. It's time to create a space to discover our purpose again. We are starting back up the growth track and getting right back into helping you discover your why. I believe you were created with a purpose and it's more relevant now than ever. You have a purpose and you were created to serve in your purpose. And this time in this season, and as your church, we want to partner with you in discovering that. And we want to give you the opportunity to make a difference in our community one life at a time. I know there's a lot of feelings and questions coming with this announcement. I put together a statement with some more of the specifics of how we are doing this and what it looks like over on our social media pages or on our website, gatherashville.org slash welcome back. Head over there and watch that, and then if you have any more questions, just shoot us an email. We know not everyone will be ready to return yet, and we want to honor that, and so we're going to continue to provide excellent online content. But for those of you who are ready, let's worship together again. October 4th, can't wait. Today, I'm starting a two-part series called Kingdom Come. I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. Maybe you have too. 2020 is a mess. The pandemic, economic disaster, half our country is burning, the sky is turning orange. Chadwick Boseman, an absolutely brilliant actor and incredible human, has died. It's an election year, so people are mad at one another for voting for who they think is right. It's an absolute mess. It's a mess out there. The other night I was driving home and just thinking about the world today, and I just kept thinking, Jesus, come back. Come on back, Jesus. What are you waiting for? Let your kingdom come. Are you with me? It feels like this is the right time. I'm half kidding, of course, but sometimes when things are rough like they are right now, I know I tend to daydream about the world that is to come. Revelation paints a clear picture of, what, of the world as it will be. Jesus will set up His eternal kingdom right here on earth. And in Revelation 21.4, it says, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. The Bible paints a beautiful picture of what happens when it's all over as we know it. 
Everyone who's passed away is resurrected and judged. The, those who follow Jesus enter into his kingdom. And it's not some white flowy robe place in the clouds. It's this earth, but made infinite and perfect. And it's going to happen. And lately I find myself wishing it could happen sooner than later. Can you relate? Okay, but here's the reality. Jesus says it's not for us to know when that day is going to happen. And he even tells us to keep working in our purpose diligently until it does. So as much as we want to, we can't just throw our hands up yet and say we're done. In fact, more than ever, I think it's important that we work to bring the kingdom of heaven to life here in this moment in every way that we can. When the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, he gave them a template we call the Lord's Prayer, and it opens like this, Matthew 6, 9 and 10. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, you are holy. Now let your kingdom come and let your will be done and let us make it happen here in Asheville as it is in heaven. In other words, yes, Jesus is coming, and God is going to make all things new. All this sadness and disaster will end and pass away, and all will be made right. But we are not created to just sit and wait for that day. We are to participate in bringing it to fruition. We are to do whatever we can with whatever we've got to make today, here in our city, look like that kingdom of heaven. By the Holy Ghost inside of us and united as the body of Christ, you and me, we are called to pray this prayer for His kingdom to come, not just on our knees, but on our feet as we work to make His kingdom come and make Asheville, Hendersonville, Weaverville, wherever you are, as it is in heaven. We'll do it in two ways. First, we'll let it begin in me. And then we make it happen in our city. Today, I'm going to talk about letting it begin in us. And then next Sunday, we'll be talking about how we make our city as it is in heaven. So let's talk for a moment about the kingdom of heaven. What is the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of heaven is transformational. We need the kingdom of heaven now more than ever inside of ourselves because the kingdom of heaven is absolutely transformational. It changes you from the inside out and the process of us making earth as it is in heaven is the process of us being changed from the inside out. Look at this conversation Jesus had with a curious Pharisee named Nicodemus. It says, Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born again when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. My guy Nicodemus is a very literal person, and Jesus just blew his mind. <laughs> Verse 5 says, Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Real transformation is hard for us to understand because it happens in the spiritual before it happens in the physical. Jesus uses the example of the wind and of being born again. This is where that saying, born again, like born again Christian, this is where it comes from. He means, Jesus means, that for His kingdom to come on earth, those of us who follow Him need to relearn what we think we know. When we are born naturally, we have things in us that contribute to the brokenness of this world. We start lying when we're two years old. We make wrong choices. We learn to hate people who hurt us. We learn to judge people who look differently than us. But Jesus says that when we follow Him... If we want to see kingdom come, we need to relearn everything. It's like being born again, but this time we aren't alone. We're born in the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit inside of us makes it possible for us to learn to tell the truth without compromise. 
The Spirit helps us learn to see people the way God sees people. The Spirit helps us learn to love those, even those who hurt us. The kingdom of heaven is transformational, and it transforms us from the inside out. If we want to see the world change, if we want it to be in Asheville as it is in heaven, we need to let this kind of transformation take place in our hearts. Jesus talks about the wind and relates it to the Holy Spirit. You can see the effects of the wind everywhere. It can completely change the landscape from one thing to another, even though we can't see it and it's hard to really understand it. In the same way, when the Holy Spirit enters us, we can see the effects of it, even if we can't see the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of heaven is transformational. And the kingdom of heaven is for anyone. It's for anyone. I've been talking a lot about unity lately. When Jesus taught, He would often step into the spiritual conversation of the culture He was in and either expose the truth of Scripture related to that moment or elevate the standard of holiness. Right now, it's common for people to identify as a Christian but act in ways that are divisive, dismissive, and judgmental towards others. This is one of the reasons we need to lean into prayer right now. We need to lean into this prayer right now. Kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, help us to make today more like your vision for what's to come. Now more than ever, we need to do our part to bring the kingdom of heaven near. And the kingdom of heaven is for everyone. Jesus tells a few parables to demonstrate that. One is a parable about workers in a field coming at different times and getting the same pay. The guys that worked the longest complained about it, but the owner of the field says, it's my field, and if I want to reward everyone the same, I can. He tells this parable to make it clear that it's never too late for someone to enter the kingdom of heaven. He tells another parable about a farmer sowing seeds and his enemy sows weeds in with this crop. When someone asks him if that farmer should remove the weeds, he says no, because you might pull the crop up along with them. So let them both grow in the field and the farmer will separate it at the end. This was to teach us that it's not our job to judge other Christians. It's true that some people may go to our churches that do more harm than good and who never really grasp what it means to know God. But we need to water them and allow them to coexist all the same because you and I aren't the ones responsible for judging their motives. Then there's the story in Matthew 22. It says, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those that I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. This parable is a big deal because it's the most clear moment during Jesus' ministry where he says that the kingdom of heaven is going to be for everyone, Jew and Gentile alike. Here's my point. Our goal is to make our city look more like the kingdom of heaven. And that means that instead of constantly fighting with each other and picking and choosing who we associate with based on who thinks the most like us, we should be fixated on building his church sharing His gospel message, and praying for His kingdom to come because the kingdom of God is for anyone. This also goes another way. Maybe you identify more with that second round of wedding guests. Maybe, you always are wor- Maybe you've always worried you'd be confused for a weed. Maybe you're one of those workers who's coming at the end of the day. The kingdom of heaven is for anyone and that includes you. You can be a part of making kingdom come right here today. And it doesn't matter what your past is, what mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter if you feel like you fit in or if you feel like you belong. You belong in the kingdom of heaven. One more thing that we learn from Jesus is that the kingdom of God can start small. I know it's overwhelming maybe to think that as a follower of Jesus, you have this job of making our city and yourself look more like the kingdom of heaven. But you can be a part of this. Jesus says in Matthew 13, 31, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. And though it's the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that birds come and perch in its branches. What you think you have to offer, 
may start out very small, but your gifts, your purpose, your impact has the ability to grow through the power of the Holy Spirit to something bigger than yourself and bigger than anything you ever imagined. So if that's a glimpse of what the kingdom of heaven is, we've got to do the work to make his kingdom come in us. It starts inside of us. All three of these things that we want to happen in us start right here with me, inside of me. And so pray the prayer, God, let your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But it's time to also start to walk the walk. And here's how. Number one, you need to be born again. Be born again. Being born again means more than just saying the sinner's prayer and then going on about your life. It's about being transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit and becoming new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. Romans 6.4 even says, We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Who you once were has to die, to be wiped away so that something new can come. Being born again means putting to death the life of wondering and searching and never quite fitting in and stepping into a life defined by purpose and peace and satisfaction. I remember when I held my firstborn child in my hands for the first time. Her head looked like an alien when she first came out. It freaked me out. It's really kind of nerve-wracking in the beginning. If you've never had a kid before, just wait. But after the first, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, I remember looking at her and just thinking, she is so beautiful and perfect. And she was so beautiful and perfect because she was mine. And she had so much promise, so much hope, so much future ahead of her with anything a possibility. This is the image Jesus wants us to get of what it's like to start a new relationship with Him. Let His kingdom come in you by being made new in Him. You are restarting and renewing your potential. You were born with the potential and purpose that you have right now. But when you enter into a relationship with Jesus, you are like that fresh born baby with all this possibility ahead of you of who you can be. Maybe you've been a follower of Jesus a long time and a lot has gotten in the way. Jesus tells the old religious teacher Nicodemus that being born again is even possible for an old man by the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray the prayer of Paul in Ephesians 1.17. He says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. And I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Ask God to help you restart what you know, to give you wisdom and revelation to know Him better, insight to know Him better. Ask God to take part of this process. God, help me to recreate who I am so that I can be made new again. Ask Him to help you be born again. And then, after you've done that, You need to find your place. Find your place. The kingdom of heaven is for anyone. That includes you. And those stories also teach us that everyone has a part to play. All those parables we read earlier, they show us that everyone has a part to play. You aren't just a part of the kingdom of heaven. You have a part in the kingdom of heaven. You've got a job to do. You were created with a specific purpose. Your gifts, dreams, desires, and passions were placed there by an intentional God for you to use to glorify Him and serve people in such a way that it fulfills you completely. It's your God-given purpose. In Ephesians 1.18 again, he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. That's where we get the finding freedom idea from, that you would have your heart enlightened. The eyes of your heart would be opened, another version says. That that is um, our prayer, that we might find freedom in all the sin and the, the mistakes and the guilt and the shame of our past would be stripped away so that we could finally see our purpose, be enlightened in order that you may know the hope or purpose to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. 
God created you to have a specific place in the bringing about the kingdom of heaven here on earth. And we want to help you find what that is. It says in Ephesians 2.10, we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So this is one of the reasons I'm so excited for us to come back to meeting in person in a couple weeks. Starting October 18th, we will be resuming Growth Track every Sunday so that we can help you discover your purpose and find your place, your way to begin to really make a difference in our city. So much has changed this year. Maybe you've been through Growth Track and you are making a difference on our dream team on Sundays, but now you've forgotten how that feels and you aren't really sure if you want to come back. I want to encourage you, step back into it for a week or two and remember why it matters so much. We are uniquely positioned to offer people hope, peace, comfort, and a home in a year of troubles and loss. By discovering your purpose and stepping into it on the dream team, you get to be a part of meeting people in that place. We have always been passionate about the idea at the Gathering Church that we are the church, that it's not just the ministers and the staff that do the work of the church, but we all take part of it together. And by doing so, we find greater satisfaction than we ever could just watching it. And this is one of those unique things about being able to meet together again on a Sunday that I can't wait for us as a church family to begin to experience again. And the last thing today, the way that we, we allow the kingdom of heaven to really begin to take root in us is you let it grow. Number three, let it grow, let it grow. Let it grow, let it grow, let it grow. It's like a, the Let It Snow song. That's kind of where I was going with that. Let's get back on track. Matthew 13, 31 says, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, when it grows, it is the largest of gardens planted and becomes a tree, so the birds come and perch in its branches. It starts small, and it turns into something beautiful. But in order for that to happen, you've got to let it grow. You've got to let it grow. And you let it grow by working on growing yourself. When the kingdom of God grows in you, it grows around you. So work on growing the kingdom of heaven in you. Do it a, a few different places. Do it at home. Last week, we talked about those spiritual disciplines. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Like a vine, like a branch on a vine, we grow when we are connected. We begin to produce the fruit that brings about the kingdom of heaven when we stay connected to that source. And so the first way we connect to God and grow ourselves is to connect to the source at home through prayer. Pray first. If you still don't have a healthy prayer life and you're ready for your year to change, this is the first place for you to start. Begin every day in prayer. Just work on giving God the first 15, if that's all you've got. For the first 15 minutes of your day, start it right by doing your first five minutes in worship. Just put on your headphones or, or, or have Alexa play a playlist or do whatever. Five, one worship song, worship, worship, worship. Turn your eyes to Him for a minute. Center your day on Him. And then five minutes of reading the Bible Study His Word a little bit and then five minutes of prayer. Just 15 minutes. Give Him your first 15 minutes. You can do that. Anybody can do that. And do more if you can, but begin growing at home. Let it grow in your heart at home and then grow in community. In your life group, you can find freedom and grow the kingdom of God in your heart by being vulnerable with others and letting people speak into your life as you speak into theirs. We grow in community when we lean into community. So if you're not in a life group yet, join a life group and begin to really honestly do life with others. And we let it grow in us through participation. Grow the kingdom of heaven in you by working to grow it in others. We have opportunities. Uh, come, come join us and be a part of it when we have opportunities to serve our community. Join the dream team. Discover your purpose and live in it. Just participate. When you serve, something happens in you. You just, you grow when you serve others. When you act like Jesus to the people around you, 
you grow. If you lean in in these ways, you will see that mustard seed grow and grow. And we, we can begin to pray on our feet that God would make his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And if we can keep doing these things, we let this thing grow. We believe that it's for me. We make it for those who don't yet know that it is for them. When we do these things, when we lean in this way, when we learn what it means to be born again and we start to transform who we are to be more like Him, the kingdom of heaven looks a little bit more like where we're staying. Or rather, where we are, where we're standing, looks a little bit more like the kingdom of heaven. It starts in us. And then from us, it goes out. Next week, we're going to talk about how we are going to bring the kingdom of heaven into reality right here in our city. But until then... Uh, let me just encourage you, if you are watching right now and you've never entered into a relationship with Jesus, you don't know what it really means to be born again. You've not experienced the rebirth in your spirit, then I, I can help you step into that relationship right now, wherever you are in this moment. All you have to do is say yes. It's an opening conversation, a prayer that is your moment to commit yourself to follow Jesus. And when you do that, His Word says that His Spirit indwells us, that He fills us up, and that we're spiritually born again. If you're ready to do that, would you pray this prayer with me? Heavenly Father, I thank You so much for doing all that You have done to make it possible for me to be in a relationship with You. Forgive me for all my sins, all my mistakes. Forgive me for trying to do it on my own. Forgive me for all the ways that I've messed it up. God, I, I believe in you. And today, I am committing my life to you. I give all that I am to make your kingdom come here on earth. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. If, if you just prayed that prayer, you've got to go fill out a connect card right now so that we can have uh, the opportunity to show you your next steps. We believe that the church is a family and we want to be your family as you enter into this next step, this next part of your life. And so uh, we're so excited for you. This is also when you can respond by filling out a connect card for a number of things. You can let us know if you have prayer requests and our prayer team would love to pray for you. If you are um, watching and we're announcing going back and you, you wanna be on that dream team, you're excited about being on the dream team, we would love to have you back on the dream team or even on the dream team for the first time. Fill out a connect card and mark dream team on there and let us know and somebody will reach out to you ASAP to get you plugged in and ready to serve. Guys, we, we are so excited to get back together again with you. This is also the moment in our service where we worship and respond through giving. You know, we just really believe that giving is worship. You've been so generous over this time, and I'm so grateful for it. And, and so if this is your church home, we just invite you to continue to partner with us in giving. Hey, let me pray for us one more time as we close, and we'll see you back next week. Can't wait. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, God, that you are helping us to make all things new, that no matter how bad it seems, how scary it seems outside right now, that God, you are giving us your spirit, your power, your ability to make your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so God, we submit ourselves to that process. Help us to be used by you. Let your kingdom come in us so that we can make it come right here in our city. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Gathering Church Podcast is produced by the Gathering Church Creative Team. Want to get involved? Fill out a Connect card online at gatherashville.org. Find us on Facebook at The Gathering Church or on Instagram at Gather Asheville.